Previously, Chu King went to Xing Lai's house to negotiate with her to let his sister marry Xing Tao. It was quite challenging, but he was successful with the mission. Chu Ting returns to Wawa. She becomes emotional when she sees him. She was scared that he wouldn't make it out alive. He tells her he got beat up by two old women and needs to rest. The next morning, he receives a call from Tang Zian while lying on the bed. She asks him why he isn't yet in school, and he tells her to tell the teacher that he is sick and can't come to school. Zian tells him that the teacher will call his parents if he doesn't come, and he is surprised. She reminds him of his bet with the homeroom teacher on making it to the top 10 in her test. He quickly gets up and runs to school while the teacher is about to start the test. He apologizes for coming late and goes to his C for the test. After the test, Song Charen asks him if he is confident about making it to the top 10. Chu Ting assures her, telling her he answered all the questions. Tang Zian and Tao Yunio approach them, and Yunio soon begins to bully Song Charen for flirting with Zian's man. Zian stops her and asks if he'd join them and have lunch. Chu Ting agrees and invites Song Chorin along, but she excuses herself and leaves out of fear. Chu Ting sees Yi Mao, who is shy to declare his feelings to Yunio. Yi Mao tries to escape, but Chu Ting grabs and takes him along. Zian asks if he is Chen Xi's brother, and Chu Ting is embarrassed, so he quickly heads for lunch with Yi Mao. At the lunch table, Zian asks Chu Xing if he thinks he can really make it to the top 10 but he replies that he doesn't know. Zion then asks him if he has been with Chengxi for the past few days, but he claims that he has been busy and quickly changes the topic, telling Yi Mao to confess his feelings to Yunio. Yu Mao becomes embarrassed, and Chu Ting asks Yunio what he thinks about him. Yunio challenges Chu Ting to confess his own feelings first, if he wants her to tell him how she feels about Yi Mao. Chu Ting quickly confesses that he likes Sinian. Zion asks him what Chengxi is to him if he claims he likes her. Chu Ting asks who said that he could only like one person. Zion gets angry and kicks him. As Yunio tries to say he doesn't like Yi Mao, he quickly confesses that he loves her and begins to tell her about how he has known her since they were little. Yunio always competed and won in food contests, which attracted him to her. Yunio remembers who he is and becomes embarrassed. She smashes Yi Mao's head on the food before him and leaves. Zion leaves too, leaving Yi Mao and Chu Ting at the table. Yi Mao tells Chu Ting how embarrassed he is and tells him to give him a heads up before he does it the next time so he can mentally prepare himself. Chu Ting returns home and is surprised to meet Huavua talking with his mother. His mom tells him that she invited her over for dinner to thank her for helping with the problem at the company. She tells him she wants to see him privately, and he follows her to the room. In the room, his mom asks him about his relationship with Huavua and he replies that they are just friends. She tells him that she suspects they have a thing together, and says that he used to like Chengxi, and now he is with another girl. His mother tells him that he has to have some self-respect, being a boy. Chu Ting tells her that he plans to marry them into the family. His mom can't believe her ears and calls him crazy. Chu Ting tells her that he is a grown man and she should lecture his elder sister, who has a boyfriend instead. She tells him that his sister has been on the phone all day and tells him to go and call her for dinner. Chu Ting heads to her room and meets on a video call with Xing Tao. After a while, she hangs up and tells him that Xing Tao said his mom has now agreed to their relationship. She thanks him for helping her, but he asks her if she can meet Xing Lai's condition of getting a house in Zhuk Street within a year, without which she will have to marry into their family. Chu Xiao is shocked, but Chu Ting tells her he has a way to go about it. He tells her to focus on helping her mom at the company to ease the burden on her. He returns to Wuabua and asks if she would love to work at his mom's company. She responds with a yes and Chu Ting kisses her. Meanwhile, his mom is watching them from her room. Discovering that she saw them, Wuabua becomes embarrassed and quickly heads home. Chu Ting returns inside and tells his mom he wants Wuabua to work at the company. His mom tells him there is no vacancy, but Chu Ting tells her they can expand the company and create a new department that she can manage. His mom asks him why she would want the company to grow that big, and he replies that it's because of the Chu family. He further says he won't marry into the Gong family and is unafraid of Chu and Lan. On hearing this, his mom shuts him up and tells him to return to his room immediately. His mom later goes to his room to apologize for being too harsh. She tells him that she has been tolerating them giving them an advantage over her, but that will change from now on. Chu Ting thinks he only has Meng Zui left to deal with and heads to her place. 
He gives her the writing Sing Lai gave him, ordering her to back off his sister. Meng Zui asks him how he could pull that off, but he doesn't respond and attempts to take his leave. She appears immediately behind him and grabs him seductively. Chu Ting kisses her, and she forcefully pushes him away. She then draws him with some power and grabs him by the neck, asking him why he kissed her. Chu Ting frees himself from her grasp and threatens to make her regret her actions. She demands an apology and payment for what he did. Chu Ting willingly apologizes, but she still asks about the money. Chu Ting is surprised, and she reminds him about agreeing to pay an amount of money when he came to save his sister the other day. He tells her he doesn't have money, and she asks him to give her his sword instead. He also says he is not with it, but she doesn't believe it and tells him that he made the sword appear out of nowhere the previous time. She asks what technique he used to hide the sword and tells him she will forget about the money and sword if he teaches her the technique. He tells her she is too greedy, summons his gun and shoots at her. However, she resists the Wang Chuan bullets and brings out her own special gun too. He offers to give her a hundred spirit stones as he gave her the last time, but she refuses and tells him it isn't enough. He then throws an item to her, which boosts her power after she absorbs it, and she requests for more. Chu Ting promises to give her one about the size of his fist, and she allows him to leave. After he leaves, she smiles, mocking that she would make him her male pet, which will never elude her grasp. On the other hand, Chu Ting plans to conquer and marry her into his family. The next day, Chu Ting goes to his mother's company to see how Huawa is doing in her new job. Huawa is loved and respected by everyone for her amazing job. Chu Ting teases her by calling her director. Huawa tells him that he requested that his mom employ her as a technical consultant, but she made her the director instead. After that, Chu Ting heads to school and on getting to school, he notices a lot of whisperings around among the students. Yima walks up to him and tells him that the test scores have been released, and there's a rumor that he didn't make it to the top 10. He asks if Chu Ting is already done preparing his apology speech to be presented in the assembly the next morning. However, Chu Ting does not accept that he didn't make it to the top 10. In the class, the homeroom teacher Tong Fi tells Chu Ting to come with his parents the next day, but he protests that he is confident he made it to the top 10. The teacher says he got first place in his class, but 11th place in his grade, and accuses him of cheating to even achieve that. Chu Ting requests evidence to show he cheated, and she tells him they will go to the security room to review the footage in the security camera. Zilan and Yunio join in the security room as they review the class footage during the test. Chu Ting is not seen cheating, teacher Tong is shocked. Chu King calls their attention to the student that was seen cheating, and they summon the student to the security room. The principal tells the director to handle the situation, and she takes her to leave. The director apologizes for the trouble they caused Xu Ting, and they all leave the security room. On their way back, Zion congratulates him for making it to the top 10 and being the first male who ever did. He is surprised, and she explains that one of the girls on the top 10's list was removed due to cheating, making him, in the 11th position, enter the top 10. Everyone starts to admire Chu Ting, the first male who made it to the top 10, and his relationship with Zian. Many days after the cheating incident, Teacher Tong introduces a new student to the class, Lai Yu Wei. Chu Ting is shocked. He remembers Lai Yu Wei used to be Zian's fiance. After the class, Chu Ting talks with Zian about Lai Yu Wei joining her school, and she asks him if he is jealous. He refuses to admit he is, and Zian pecks him. Meanwhile, Lai Yu Wei spies on them, and he gets jealous and angry. Zhu Bu Ken and the other two meet Chu Ting and tell him how Lai Yu Wei has been spreading rumors about him to spoil his reputation. They ask him if he wants them to take him to the restroom and beat him up, but he tells them not to bother about him much. He thinks that Zian's mum is the main problem and reasons how he can change her mind towards him. Bu Ken tells him that they have been practicing the cultivation technique he taught them, and there have been no side effects. He measures the status of their respective realms and encourages them. He then gives them spirit stones to help them cultivate faster. After they leave, he lies in a nearby bush and thinks about whether he will ever be able to leave this world or even be willing to leave, considering the people close to him. Yunio, Yi Mao, and Xu Ting have lunch together, and Zion joins them, with Lai Yu Wei tagging along. Zion sits at the table, Xu Ting is seated, and Lai Yu Wei joins reluctantly. Yunia takes Yi Mao to leave the three to their issues and not interfere. Chu Ting and Zian are all lovey-dovey, which makes Lai Yu Wei jealous and demands attention from Zian. 
After a while, Zion heads to the toilet, and Lai Yue warns Chu Ting to stay away from Zion, threatening him about the last time he tried to attack him with his bodyguards. Zion meets him ranting and threatening Chu Ting, and she sends him away. Chu Ting brags that he has greatly helped Zion and asks her how she will thank him. She tells him it is his duty as her boyfriend to chase other men away. Lai Yue takes Chu Ting's picture to an assassin, asking him to kill Chu Ting. Later, as Chu Ting heads to his car, he receives a message from Meng Zhu, showing him his sister's picture. He gets shocked and wonders if Meng Zhu has captured his sister again, against their agreement. He later discovers that his sister is fine after calling her. As soon as he hangs up the call and enters his car, he immediately senses danger in his car and quickly jumps out while it explodes. He leaves in a taxi and calls Zhu Bukan to check the CCTV in the parking lot to find out who did it. Chu King goes to Meng Zui's residence. He wonders if Meng Zui sent her men to blow up his car. On getting inside, he discovers that Meng Zui has gotten stronger in the last few days. He asks her why she is looking for him, and she doesn't give any tangible reason. He tries to leave immediately, but she dashes at him and stops him. She then tears his clothes off his body, and he accuses her of looking for him because she is hot and wants to satisfy herself. She confesses, and Chu Ting immediately draws her closer, and they soon start their romance. She asks him to be her pet, and she will keep his sword and its secret for him. He asks her if she will forgive him if he does something wrong, and she says she won't be mad at him. She then asks him to immediately bring out his sword and show her its secret, but he tells her that she can't get angry after showing her something. She becomes curious about what he wants to show her. He breaks the glass walls of her apartment and flies out of it, escaping her grasp. Meng Zhu gets angry and tells him she will kill him when they meet next. She says that his sister still works as a bartender in the complex anyway, and she would be able to get her revenge. Chu Ting calls Zhu Bukan to find out if they have found the person who blew his car, and Zhu Bukan tells him that it was done by someone La Yue hired. He further tells Chu Tsing that he found out that La Yue will be picking someone up from the airport by midnight. Chu King gets angry and heads to go and find Lai Yue, but Tang Zion meets him along the way. She tries to talk him out of doing it because of the consequences it could attract from the Lai family, on both his family and the Yi family. However, he doesn't listen and tells her not to worry about his problems. As he leaves, he meets Chengxi. Chengxi tells him her mom forced her to come and stop him, but she will be fighting alongside him instead. Aunt Yi soon arrives to tell Chu Ting it isn't the right time to do this even though she wishes to repay him for saving her life and her family. He tells her he doesn't need any help and can handle the Lai and the Tang families, such that Jinmin will respect the Yi family in the future. Zion's mom appears and tells him to cut the crap. Shu King ignores her and leaves anyway. She gets angry and attempts to attack him, but Aunt Yi stops her and tells her she must go through her first. At the airport, Shu King sees an old woman who is a master guarding Lai Yuwei. Lai Yuwei is surprised that he is not dead and asks why he is at the airport. Chu Ting tells him he has come to kill him, and the old woman interrupts. He tells him to take the fight outside. Getting outside, the old woman tells him that she is ranked fourth in the Lai family and goes on to launch an attack. Chu King dodges it, and she launches even more attacks at him. Chu blocks all the attacks using a sword defense technique. He then sends many sword attacks at her. She gets distracted and tries to block them. But Chu Ting suddenly appears in her front and stabs her with his sword, killing her. Lai Yuwei's other bodyguard attempts to shoot him, but he is faster. He summons his gun and shoots both of them with the Wang Chuan bullet, thus killing them. He takes the flower Lai Yuwei was carrying and wonders if he has got a big catch since Lai Yuwei, with the protection of a master, came to welcome someone at the airport. Meanwhile, the Tang and Yi families have been fighting. Lai Dian, the Lai family's head, the Lai family, and the elder of the Lai family arrive at the scene. Lai Yan tells Aunt Yi to get lost so she can go and save her son, but she refuses. She gets angry and attempts to attack, but Meng Zui steps in between them. She is surprised to see three powerful families gathered together in the same place and sarcastically asks them if they want to choose the ruler of Jinmen City. The elder from the Lai family attempts to attack her, but Meng Zui damages her in one hit. They all get shocked. She tells them she has no business with them and says she has come to kill someone. Zion's mother asks her who the person is, and she tells them that he is at the airport. Lai Yan tells Meng Zhu that she is going to the airport, too, and offers to give her some high-level healing medicines. Meanwhile, at the airport, Chu Ting welcomes the guest Lai Yue was waiting for. 
She asks him why La Yu Wei is not there to pick her up, and he tells her he has killed him already. He then knocks her out and carries her out of the airport. On getting out, he sees a car and puts her in it. As he drives, he sees Li Yan and Meng Sui driving opposite him. He raises his gun and fires at them. They escape from their respective cars, but Li Yan is injured while Meng Zhu comes out unscathed. Meng Zhu allows Chu Ting to escape. As Chu Ting continues driving, he calls Cheng Xi to pick up his family and allow them to stay at the Yi family's mansion for some days. Cheng Xi asks her mom, and she agrees, hoping Chu Ting will fulfill his promise of making Jimin respect the Yi family in the future. Li Yan discovers that Meng Zhui also wants to kill Chu Ting and tells them to merge so they can get in together. She becomes shocked when she realizes that Meng Zhu had let Chu Ting escape, and Meng Zhui tells her that Chu Ting can only die in her hands and nobody else's. Li Yan says she will let him go and kill anyone close to him. She brings out the Cheyenne reagent and pours them on her wound. She realizes that the medicine is poor, even though it was made with the Tang family's prescription, compared to the one the Tang family makes themselves. She then reasons that she must bring an important person from the imperial capital to destroy the Tang family. Li Yan asks her subordinate about the important person from the imperial capital. She replies that Chu King left with her, and she gets very angry. Meanwhile, Chu Ting realizes he could easily be tracked with the car and the lady's phone, so he stops and blows it up along with her cell phones. He carries the lady to the Yunsheng River in Yunshan Mountain and throws her into the river to wake her up. He reasons that women in this world are not to be treated gently, and he could die if he has a soft heart in this situation. The lady regains consciousness and becomes scared, thinking she has died and it is in the afterlife. She later realizes she is still alive and yells at Chu Ting. Chu Ting tortures her as he asks for her name, and she tells him it is Kao Wei. He asks her further questions, and when she refuses to talk, he tortures her. She tells him she is a student who deals in the study of medicines, and Lai Nian hired her so she could develop drugs for her. Chu Ting doesn't believe her. He wonders how a dignified family like the Lai family would hire a college student. He carries her to the deeper side of the river on the jetty and threatens to throw her in for the fish to eat if she doesn't talk. He then asks why the Lai family likes her, and she reveals that she is a student at the National University. The university had to release her against her will when a powerful family came to demand for her. He tells her they should go together to get a change of clothes for her, but she tells him her leg is numb and she can't stand up. He tries to help her up, but she drags him so he can fall in the river. However, Chu Ting drags her along too. She becomes scared and offers to work for him. Well, she plans to make poison and kill him with it. Chu Ting brings her out of the water, and soon, she sleeps beside him while he provides her with his magic warmth. Meanwhile, Meng Zhu calls her subordinates to go and kidnap Chu Xiao. As Chu Xiao walks home after work, some ladies cross her and attempt to attack her. Another set of ladies from the Tang family arrives to save her, and as they take her away, a different set of ladies arrive and beat the ones from the Tang family. Chu Xiao recognizes one of them, Sister Nan who tells her that the boss asked her to return to work overtime. Lai Yan is at Chu King's house. She and her subordinate search and scatter everywhere, but can't find any of his family members. She suspects Yi King Mei, Chen Xi's mom, had made the first move before her arrival, so she heads to her place. On meeting Yi King Mei, Lai Yan tells her to attack Chu King's family, or she will destroy hers, but King Mai responds that Chu Ting once saved her life. Chu Ting wakes Kao Wei the next day and takes her to his house. He sees his house and a mess and promises to repay all those who did this to him a hundredfold. They then head to the Yi family's residence. On getting there, Cheng Xi runs to hug Chu Ting as she is excited to see that he is fine. Chu Ting introduces Kao Wei to Cheng Xi and tells her to take care of her and not let anyone meet her or let her escape. He then asks about his parents, and Cheng Xi tells him that they are fine, but his sister is captured by Meng Zui's women. Surprised to hear this, he abuses his sister for not staying at his mom's company and rather visiting Meng's bar again. He tells her to keep his whereabouts a secret from everyone and pretend he is missing. She asks him about his sister. He tells her that Meng Zui will not hurt her and is just using her as bait. He asks about Chen Xi's family, and she tells him that they lost 30% of their forces to a fight against the Lai family, and that the berserk pills prevented them from losing more. She then mentions that her third aunt, Yi Mai, started an issue about it. Chu Ting knows that Yi Mai is doing this because she wants to be the head of the Yi family. Chu Ting shapeshifts and wears a mask. He tells Chen Xi to take him to her mom, 
while he pretends he is Mr. John, Chu King's master. Chengxi takes him to her mom, and on their way, a little boy named Xiao Lir comes to meet them. He childishly asks for Chu King's masks, and Chengxi promises to get him one. After the boy leaves, Chu Ting tells her he was sent to come and find out who he is. Chengxi is shocked and tells him that Xiao Lir's mother is close to Yimai. On meeting King Mi, Chengxi introduces him as Mr. Jun, Chu King's master, and she is surprised. She tells him to have his sit and asks him why he visited them. He tells her that the Lai family bullied his student, and he has come to support him. She then asks him why he came looking for the Yi family, and he brings out a pill saying it will benefit the Yi family. He tells her that the Tang family is in control because they can make medicine. He also tells her that since the Lai family has obtained the Tang family's recipe, they would seek to take them out of business and destroy them. He doesn't want the Lai family to take control, so he offers to set up a company that produces medicines while the Yi family pays for the raw materials. Yimai suddenly arrives. King Mei introduces Mr. Zhang as the foreign aide she invited. Chu King tells her he has gotten uncomfortable and wants to start going. She tells Chengxi to see him off, and Yimai also tells her daughter, Meyer, to see him off as he leaves. On their way, Meyer begins to ask many questions until Chengxi gets angry and tells her to shut up. Xiao Lir appears with many candies. Chu Ting teases him and asks him for candies, but Xiao Lir tells him he is not giving him. Meyer gets angry and pushes the little boy away. Chu Ting continues to tease him by asking him where he got the candies from, as he would also love to buy and Xiao Lir replies that Meyer got them for him. She quickly tries to change the subject. Chu King gets angry and slaps her, telling her to mind her business. Chengxi and Chu Ting leave together in a car, and as they drive, Chengxi receives a message from her mom that she has accepted the offer, but on a condition. Chengxi's elder sister has to run the company. Chu Ting is surprised. He never knew Chengxi had a sister, as he has never seen her before since he visited Chengxi. Chengxi tells him that she has been away for two years, traveling the world. Her sister left home shortly after her newly married husband died in a car accident. Chengxi warns him not to think of hitting on her sister, and Chu Ting promises not to. They soon arrive at the checkup point. Chengxi is surprised and wonders why military intelligence personnel wears traffic police uniforms. Chu Ting quickly makes himself invisible, using the invisibility technique before it reaches their turn. After passing the checkpoint, Chengxi is surprised and wonders where Chu Ting learned all the tricks. Soon, Chu King discovers they are being followed and tells Chengxi to drive slowly. Chengxi makes a turn and another car blocks them. Some women in purple robes come out of the car and start shooting at them. Chu Ting protects Chengxi in the car, knowing that he will quickly heal from the level 1 Wang Chuan bullet, but Chengxi could die if the bullets hit her. After a while, the women stop shooting, and thinking that the Wang Chuan bullets must have killed her, they try to leave. Chu Ting comes out of the car and tells them it is unprofessional to leave when their target has not died. They are surprised to see him and wonder how he got into the car. Chu Ting realizes that the military intelligence personnel had partnered with the women to kill Chengxi, since they were the only ones who thought she was the only one in the car. The women attempt to shoot him, and he dodges the bullets. He runs towards them, grabs them, and hits their heads against each other. Chengxi asks them why they want to kill her since the Jammu department messengers will not interfere in the Jimin City family battle. The women plead and tell Chengxi they are only following orders, and Chu Ting asks who ordered them. One of them threatens Chu Ting, and he snaps her neck. He moves to the second one, and she says she won't tell him anything since he will still kill her anyway. Chu King uses a mystical power and absorbs all her thoughts, killing her. They pack their bodies and blow them up along with the car. Chu Ting tells Chengxi that Huan Keishin, the head of the military surveillance department, ordered them. Chengxi wonders if Wang Keishin and the Lai family colluded together. Wang Keishin is a man who cut his genitals so he could practice ancient martial arts and become strong. Chengxi is scared that Wang Keishin might kill her, but Chu Ting tells her he has a way to solve it. He tells her that since Wang Keishin wants to kill her and not the entire surveillance department, they could just change the main body of the military surveillance department and eradicate him. Chengxi thinks this is a crazy idea. Meanwhile, Chu Ting is badly injured and he tells Chengxi to take her to Kao Wei so he can be treated. On getting to the Yi family's residence, Kao Wei sees him hurt and says he should have died instead. Chengxi gets angry and tries to hit her, but Chu King stops her and says they will work together in the future. He tells Chengxi to go and inform her mom about all that happened while Chao Wei attends to his wound. 
She first refuses but later accepts to treat him. He opens his wound, and Kyo Wee is shocked that the Wang Chuan poison did not spread. Chu Ting asks if she wants to learn, and she says yes. He then tells her to treat him first, and that he will teach her later. After she is done, Chengxi returns to give the report of what her mom said. She tells Chu Ting that Meng Zui has stopped looking for him and has not caused any trouble for a while. She also tells him that the Li family promises not to destroy the Yi family if only they hand him over to them. She finally says that her mom has finished building the company and has provided all the necessary equipment. She then says that she asked if he could really handle the military surveillance department, and he tells her to hide for some time as the surveillance would soon start looking for her. They head to the new company the next day to check it out. Chu King writes a recipe for a drug, and when Kyo Wei checks it, she realizes it is poison. Chu Ting is impressed that she can tell it's poison only in one glance. He then thinks of how rich he would become when Kyo Wei finally turns all his recipes into varieties of valuable medicines. Chiao Wei produces the medicine, and Chu Ting drips his blood into it. He asks her to drink it, telling her this would prevent her from running away and that she will face the consequence if she does. Chu Ting tells her the poison will erupt inside her if he dies. He gives her two more recipes and tells her to make them as fast as possible. He tells her that he will give her the antidote after one year of her working with him. He reasons that one year is enough to solve the problems in Jimin City. He wants to use the other two recipes to eliminate the Tang family's medicine. Chu Ting comes to tell him that the mayor, Xing Lei, is demanding that Mr. Jan visits her at the Xing family residence. He heads to Xing Li's house. Chengxi is worried that he didn't mask himself, but he tells her that Xing Li already knows he is Mr. John. He sees Xing Tao, his sister's boyfriend, and leaves Chengxi with him while he meets the mayor. On seeing Xing Lei, he asks her why she called for him, and she shows her a clip of Lai Yan involved in sexual activity with Wang Keishin. Chu Ting later asks her to use her power to save his sister from Meng Zui. She refuses and says he should settle his own business. Sing Lai tells him why she is against the Lai family and why she is with the Tang family. They continue to discuss the Tang and Yi family, comparing them with each other. Chu Ting asks for a pen and paper and writes something in it. He then gives it to Sing Lei to give it to Gong Yu. As he takes his leave, Sing Lei asks about his next move, but he doesn't tell her. She then tells him that if Meng Zui kills his sister, she will marry her son to Tang Zian, which taunts Chu Ting. He goes back to meet Chengxi and reasons that he needs to get rid of Wang Keishin to keep Chengxi safe. He would need some things to achieve that, so he tells Chengxi to follow him to Zhai Yu's place. Zhai Yu is very excited to see him, he thinks he has died. Chu Ting tells him he needs some finest jade and special spirit materials. Dai gets them for him, and Chu Ting sends him a lot of money. Chu Ting then shapeshifts into Mr. John and masks his face as he leaves with Chengxi. On their way back, Chengxi tells Chu Ting that if they can survive the crisis, she will marry him. Chu King smiles and replies that he will make her happy as Mrs. Chu for the rest of her life. He assures her that Guang Keishin will be dead in three days. They then head to the new company, Yi's Pharmaceutical. At the company, Chu King uses the jade stones he got to make fake dragon scales. Chengxi is shocked and tells him they could make merchandise of this and make a fortune from it. But Chu King says he is not in for trivial things like that. She asks what he wants to use them for, but he refuses to tell her. He continues to make more faked dragon scales, and after a while he meets Gao Wei. He asks for the cure for the Forgotten River Poison, and offers to give her anything she wants except to let her go. She requests that he always has her back and gives an evil smirk. After some while, she finishes making the antidote. Chu Ting begins to feel like he is slowly being poisoned. Chiao Wei smashes the test tube containing the substance she just made, and a poisonous gas fills the air. She had tricked Chu Ting into thinking she was making an antidote for him. Chu Ting falls and loses consciousness. She injects herself with the substance and gets his blood sample to make an antidote to free herself from his grip. After making the antidote, she drinks it and becomes free. She takes him to the room and lays him on the bed, and while she tries to punch him, she gets attracted to him and kisses him. This makes it her first kiss. She then goes on to sleep with him in a bid to screw him. After a while, Xu Ting wakes up to see himself tied. He breaks the rope and discovers that Kyo Wei had slept with him. He stands up and tells her it was so nice of her. Suddenly, he starts to cough blood. He grabs her neck and asks her what she did to him. Kyo Wei tells him she did the same thing he did to her and says she doesn't have an antidote for it as it contains more than 20 varieties. Xu Ting asks her to state her terms. 
She tells him to let him go and never bother again. However, he threatens her to get in the antidote in three days and finish the work he gave her in the next three weeks. She tells him she is in charge and she suddenly coughs too. She then realizes she is not yet free and wonders how that is possible, even after taking the antidote. She tells him she will take him down and starts to punch herself, which makes him feel pain too. Chu King says there was a difference between the original blood he put in her poison and the one she took when making an antidote. After a while, Chu Ting receives a call from Chengxi telling him she is with Wabla at the front of the company. He masks himself as Mr. Jan, and they head to the Yunjing River. At the Yunjing River, while he prepares for what they came to do there, he suddenly coughs blood. Chengxi is shocked and asks what happened to him. He says it's nothing and wonders if something has happened to Kiao Wei again. After making the necessary preparations, he instructs Wabua to take some pictures when he tells her. He then throws the fake dragon scales he made up and performs some cultivation, producing the representation of a dragon. He tells Wawa to take many pictures of it. On the way back, he tells them he has picked out two photos that must reach Huang Keishin the next day. He tells Wawa that she will write a press release and put it out at his command. He tells Chengxi that they will go and see her mom later as he wants to talk with her. After a while, they reach a checkpoint. Chu Ting notices that something is off and he tells Chengxi to hide at the back. He winds down, and the officer demands that he puts off his mask. Chu Ting tells the officer he is a warrior and not under his control. He then tells him to tell them at the Ministry of Supervision that he knows Chengxi's whereabouts. The officer returns to report that a cultivator claims he knows Chengxi's whereabouts, and the women from the Jianwu department follow him immediately. The women discover it is Mr. John and attack him, but he defeats them easily. Suddenly, the Chengfeng army arrives, and Chengxi tells him to leave her and escape, but Chu Qing tells her not to worry. Hua Wu tells Chengxi that since Mr. Zhang is Chu King's master, he find a way out. She does not know that Mr. Zhang is Chu Ting. Zian's second aunt, Tang Ji, comes down from the military vehicle and introduces herself. Chu Ting realizes that the commander of the Jinmen Chengfeng army is from the Tang family and reasons that Xing Lei has done a lot for the Tang family since the Chengfeng army is under her control. Wan Keishin, the Minister of Supervision of Military Affairs, soon arrives and launches an attack on Chu Ting, but he blocks the attack. Chu Ting recognizes that Wan Keishin's energy is similar to the one he felt while healing Aunt Yi. He realizes that he was the one that hurt Aunt Yi. Wan Keishin is surprised that Chu King's energy matches his own, and also discovers that he was the one who saved King Mi. Will Chu Ting defeat Wang Chuan, seeing they have almost the same energy level? Let us know if you want the next part in the comment section by commenting reverse. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. See you guys in the next video.